Je veux pas manger de chips pendant ta fête. J'ai pas que c'est des Okay, welcome. So, hello to everybody. I'm here today to present you Polymorph, a libre platform, a libre video game platform. Um, yeah. So, just to start, uh, quite clear to. Narrow a bit uh, wh what we're doing in Polymorph. The idea is to produce video games, interactive experiment, and live performance. So uh, we are a group of people working on this. Um, the crew, uh, just to mention them because uh, they are important. So Julien and I started the, the, um, the Polymorph project uh, six months ago. Uh, Peter Herman and Balthazar who is there, uh, is uh, two developers, and Louise jo joined us, and she's a choreographer and a blender artist. So the background of the project, just to explain you a bit what, we, what, um, what I have in mind when I say interactive experiments and live, state, uh, and live performance. Uh, this project is, uh, is called Tanukis, and it's a, it's a performance in which I'm the avatar is a puppet and I play with it real time and a friend of mine Loic is doing the music and so we perform on stage and we m so it's mocap uh, played in real time and then I activate effects and this kind of thing I'm just gonna skip a bit of it so there was sounds this is the sound of Loic it's quite important so when I'm when I'm talking about experiment experimenting with uh, video game technologies it's to this kind of thing that I'm thinking so there you s uh, in this project I've worked a lot on the animation part uh, uh, and I've recorded um, I re did a new um, motion uh, system uh, in unity so all the things that animate the avatar are a custom uh, animation engine. On the right, you see that it's controlled via... Speak louder, please. Ah, sorry. I'll turn the music down a bit. <laughs> yeah. I, so it's controlled by MIDI controller and um, apps, uh, so uh, via a tablet. Another part of the project was to work on an uh, on an interactive installation involving a dancer, so this time real time uh, without any recording. And this is a video of a residency that has been made in Imal, it's a center for uh, digital art in, in Brussels. And for this, it's a research with, uh, I started at Numedia, it's a, a, a research lab uh, linked to the University of Mons. And the idea is to have a, a mock-up system made of Kinect. So we have four Kinects merged together and uh, providing the animation data to the, um, to the avatar. As you see, it's not yet perfect. It's glitching a bit, uh, but it starts to work. Yeah, not just a bit. <laughs> but it, it's still under development. And just to skip a bit and show you that it's working also with uh, several people in the room. So the idea of mixing several Kinects together enable uh, uh, us to do this kind of thing. So we have a bigger area covered by the Kinects and we are also able to see people from a different angles. So the working on this project is two or three years I'm working on it. Uh, the main thing I didn't do in this project is the game engine itself and I was using Unity and so because I had some problem with it I I start to think about it, but uh, I first have to present you the tools that I'm using before and that has influenced the way I did the Polymorph engine. 
So, I'm coming from creative coding. I don't know if several of you know processing or open framework and this kind of stuff. So it's mainly text-based uh, frameworks, simplified, uh, really easy to get into hand. So uh, I started with processing. It's an IDE with uh, Java. I use Blender a lot also. I made some experimentation with Qt. And I worked a lot also with uh, Open Framework, with uh, C++ Framework. And uh, it's a thin, thin layer above uh, OpenGL. So it's very good, it do a lot of things, but when, uh, when you come to 3D, uh, 3D game or um, uh, more complex scenes, it doesn't do the job correctly. It's not <laughs> powerful enough. So during two years, I started a quest. And the first thing I tried, as you saw, was Unity. And I'm starting a bit of a comparison here. Uh, Unity looks a bit like the replicator in my point of view. It's very nice, the design, everything is perfect. You have nice buttons at the top, uh, it's very easy to use and you can print nice stuff with that. But you cannot open the box. And I need to have access to the, to the code, especially for the animation or to, to, to plug different libraries. It was too closed for me. So I tried another one, the Unreal Engine. Uh, it's open source, okay, it's uh, li the license forbid you to do things, but it was a, a good engine, an industrial one, and uh, related to the, to the power, to the power of, the, of the engine is the complexity of the engine. And I didn't want it to go to start learning an engine for one year before doing something. I want to go a bit faster than that. So it forced me to reevaluate my needs and what I expected. And uh, this is what I was searching for, in fact. It was s different libraries with a guide to put them together and the ability also to make it uh, evolve with the time. So change piece, uh, for instance, the physical engine. I want to be able to plug another one if I need to. Uh, change the sound engine, put uh, whatever I want and uh, make tailor-made game engine depending on the project I'm working on. So choosing which piece I put together. Uh, and so I made a bit of research and I end up by selecting these tools. Uh, so the, f the Pure Data I was using it for two years. So it was quite directly in the, p in the pipe. It can do graphical interface, it can do um, real-time uh, calculation and it can do sounds obviously also. So it was directly in the pot. Augur has been a bit more difficult to, um, to find because it, w it was in, um, in shortlisted with Erlicht. I don't know if some of you knows this engine. So it's an, an open source rendering engine also. But when I looked at the specs and uh, uh, the, um, the community behind, Augur seems a better choice because there was much more thing already prepared in Augur. And when uh, one year, uh, la last in June last year, they were releasing the version two of the engine, so it was um, uh, it seems to me a good choice. I wanted a physical engine into it, so I shortlisted a Bullet also because it's very well documented and easy to use, and several other tools. So on the top of the screen is everything that I didn't do myself. And in the, um, in the, in the lower part, in-house, in it's everything that comes from the project that I did before. Uh, like <coughs> the, this is the animation engine for the avatar that coming from Tanuki, the multi-connect system that I talked about or so, and the mental player with <coughs> and the mental editor is a, Nonlinear timeline editor did, done by Yasin Septi was there. Uh, he's working actively on it for several years, and it allows you to really manage the timing of, uh, of an interaction of uh, whatever you want and to make transition between them. So uh, I showed, I said to everybody that I was going to do the project in June. So in July, I start coding. 
And because I did open framework before and all kind of programming, I was thinking, yeah, okay, uh, org will not be a huge issue. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, that was not so easy. Uh, it took me about two months to really get into org uh, and to get how it was working, all the layers and all the managers inside of it. And the idea of uh, the polymorph engine is to avoid you this state of mind and provide you something a bit more easy to use. <coughs> so now, nowadays, okay, we are at version 0.1. I'm not taking too much risk here. It's really the first version. It's still um, really in the f a pack of code. Not everything is debugged. Not everything is done to synchronize everything. But at least when you download, the engine, you will get this. You will get Augur, bullet link to Augur. Uh, you will get a warper for pure data, a link to SDL to send the sound to the graphical card, uh, to the sound card, sorry. Uh, the, ga the gamepad things, etc. that was not included into Augur. You get open source uh, uh, OSC, uh, open sound control, so it's a UDP Warper that allows you to communicate between many, between many applications. I don't know if uh, some of you knows about it, but it's uh, quite common in creative coding and in live performance, this format. XML is there not because uh, I can parse XML. It's quite uh, straightforward to parse in XML, but because I provide with the package a way to describe scenes and project in XML. Augur doesn't uh, give you the, any kind of external scene description format. So I will show you after that how it's done. And several assets. Uh, and the, but the important thing about uh, Polymorph is that I try to make it simple. So here, uh, what I'll show you is the way to, I want to create a cube and to add physics to it. And this is the, the kind of code you have to write in, um, in Ogre to get it working. So you got nodes, you got entities, you got to link them together, you have to load AABB, a, a, so it's bounding box, you have to set the, the material on the cube, etc., etc. And after that, here at the bottom, it's everything to prepare the relation with bullet and get back the information from the physical engine to your object, etc. So this is what is behind, and here is what it gives when you're using Polymorph Engine. So you just create a P node, so everything is prefixed by P, so you create a P node, you say it's a cube, and you can add the scene manager and its name, and then you can declare it has the physics of a box. So it's, I think it's quite straightforward to use. And the line below, the XML, is the same thing, but in XML format. And you can load it into, the, into your application and directly have the, end, the object pre-configured for you. You have questions about it? No. So what's inside the package? So first of all, a simplified API. Uh, I have an empty project. I, I think it's quite important to have an empty project that you can just copy paste and start coding into it and to discover and to test things. Uh, simple examples also showing you different feature of Augur, of PD and how to make them uh, communicate. Augur ready assets. So Augur came with a whole system of uh, shader management and compositor management. Uh, this is also available in the examples. Blender files, uh, documentation, etc., etc. About the OS, uh, I'm working on Linux, so for the moment it's uh, only you can install quite easily via one script the whole engine on Linux. Windows. Uh, a friend of mine is working on it. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that's my battery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so for OS 6, it will come a bit later. Uh, Augur is, wor is working on the. 
Ogre is working on a on, on an OS six uh, version. Uh, once they will be done, I will integrate it, but not before. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, about the license, it's uh, the the code is released on the BSD and uh, BSD license, and uh, all the assets are in Creative Commons, so you can go and pick it, pick what you want inside of it. Uh, sorry. Um, what I had after that, uh, <laughs> I just have to reboot. Uh, the thing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, uh, something important also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, something important also is that the the engine will uh, will uh, evolve with the project uh, we do with it. So it's not like we're gonna wait to have a full engine to start uh, building application. It will be a mix um, between development of the engine and project developments. So depending on the project we're taking several features will appear. The, the first feature, the, the, the link with bullet, uh, has been made for a project that I will show you. Yep, sorry. Is it pretty? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's starting. <laughs> here and directly show you the, the demo. So this is the first project we are working on with, uh, with the engine. It's, uh, it's called Tuning Score. And the idea here is to work on the, uh, with an um, American choreographer who is called Lisa Nelson. And there is a publication uh, about her work. And this game will demonstrate, will give a, um, a 3D version of, the, of, its, um, of its theory. So it's a two-player game. Uh, you see the position of the other played online. So you, you play with somebody you don't know about. You see what the other is doing, and you, in, you can interact uh, at the same time in the in the same physical environment and make a, make the object moves propose transformation on the object and so on so you can the two players can pick the same object and play with it real time so for for those who have made a bit of uh, physical engine it's quite tricky to do um, because the two engine will desynchronize so it will have to be synchronized all the time via um, via the web uh, so this is the first project after that yeah after that i wanted to to show you the relation between pure data and um, and polymorph So, I prepared to, to show you the integration. <laughs> so what you see here is the there is a cube rotating. The X position of the cube make the pan change and the distance made the volume change. And this is sent via OSC to Pure Data to allow real-time editing. So what you see here is the data retrieved in Pure Data, the position of the cube retrieved in Pure Data. But you can also process information here 
and send it back to the engine. So what I'm doing here is I just make an envelope, an envelope detection on the sound, scale the, the sphere and the, um, and the second cube, and copy the position of the cube and the rotation of the cube, of the big cube on the small one. And I can modify this real time. I don't know, this is the, yeah. That's the advent. Uh, translation. Yeah, no, it's going below. What I'm changing here, the ball is moving in a sinus and with, with the sin. And what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm putting more and when I when you have two screens, it's a bit more visual. It's a bit more clear what you're doing. But you can also change the uh, the mapping of the data between what org is sending you and what you're putting back in the engine. So this is the edition mode that allows you to really change the behavior of the sound and the behavior of the object via per data. And by using custom object made for this, you can also just run the engine. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that's not this one. That's this one. You can run the engine with the patch loaded inside the engine without changing anything to the patch. So you can really use pure data to edit, and then you just have to integrate it and launch it in a release mode. Uh, after that, I have, oh yeah, I have several little, uh, yeah, I will just show this one. Uh, I'm going fast. This one is uh, show you that you can edit, uh, yeah, you can edit skeletons, you can uh, visualize the, 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 um, the structure of the, the armature of the skeleton and play with it real time. This is quite simple. And I have another I have another demo about shaders mainly. You will see that yeah I can move the object, change the background effects, and then uh, I control the evolution of a shader. I can enable another one, etc., etc. So it's a 3D game engine. And I have many other things, but uh, as the time goes by, uh, do you have any questions? Yeah? I assume this is C only? Yeah. Are you planning on bi adding any bindings to other languages? <laughs> <laughs> I've looked in. I, 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 I think Lua is a nice uh, scripting language. Uh, maybe well, maybe later, not for now, because there is still yeah. a lot to do in C++. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely it would be it would be cool. But I didn't do, the, do it yet. So if I, if I do a, uh, Augur, is uh, there is a binding for Java and Python for Augur, but it has to be integrated, the classes I have did have to be integrated with that or so, so it's not ready yet. Other questions? Yeah? Uh, first, uh, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry? It's pretty in the world that you turn so that burning your own engine would be simpler than uh, uh, mastering one already created. And uh, I already <laughs> used uh, all the uh, yeah. How did you manage to get good compile time for compile? Compilation time. Compilation time. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the the thing I did. Repeat the question. Yeah. Can you repeat the question? Sorry? Can you repeat the question? Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the first question was about uh, how can be dumb enough to think that building a, my own engine will be faster than mastering Unity or Unreal. And the second one is about compilation time. So the, for the first question, uh, I, um, 
I, I, don't, I don't think I can do, I will do better than Unity or Unreal. Uh, not for now, or maybe later.